Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here for checking out the series. You know what to do if you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. I'm excited to have one of those back on Luke Hemmings. You know him from five seconds of summer. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Great intro. Jeez. Oh, thank you. It's well practiced at this point. <laughs> Just know. insert name here. That's uh... yeah, absolutely <laughs> nailing it. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. We got to talk on the uh, the last Five Sauce uh, album and and run and everything. And since then, you've toured the world, and yeah. now we've got once again something from the solo set, uh, a brand new song called uh, "Shakes." First off, it's great to see you again. It looks like you've had a big old career. A career, big old year. <laughs> You've had a good career too. Um, yeah. So, what what brings us back here? What makes it time again to uh, to do the solo turn? Yeah, uh, good question. I think, well, the solo thing started in COVID when it was very isolated, and the band had just put out their fourth album. So, I sort of fell into it by accident. I always like thought, you know, I'd like to try something on my own because when you're in a band, you're like, you know, at some point down the road it'd be nice to like challenge myself and do something on my own. And COVID obviously, you know, made that happen much quicker than, you know, I would have anticipated. And I fell in love with that process and that challenge of doing it on my own. And it really unlocked like a, an emotion or this, I don't know, this ache inside me that I can sort of tap into again. So after we did the fifth band album, I think we were doing a lot of touring and, moving about and I think in the in the breaks and on the road and stuff I just was I don't know I wanted to explore it more and to see how far I could push it on my own um you know we've talked before and just I just want to be a, you know just want to be as good as I can at what I do and I really just it's just like working another muscle you know it's doing the solo thing that it's it is it's super it's very rewarding and it's uh it helps me understand myself more as a person and as a musician and as a writer and all of that so just wanted to see, I don't know, what else I could make of my own. <laughs> yeah. Does anything specifically change when it comes to the songwriting or the process? Yes. Usually, well, for the band, it's very, for Five Sauce, it's very like, you know, you, you have people to rely on, obviously. But the main difference is obviously that I'm on my own and I'm not, I don't have people to rely on. I can't go, you know, hey, Ash, hey, Cal, hey, Mike, like, how do I? how would you finish this or whatever it is. And usually when we write songs with the band, it's like you go somewhere, studio, house, wherever, and you sort of write the song that day, which is a great process. And it sort of leave most of it on the table on that day. And on my own, it's very, uh, it's very, it's a bit chaotic. And it's very like songs sort of just live in my head and there's little bits and pieces because the feeling that I want to uh, evoke and, get across and the emotion I want to get across is very well it feels to me very specific like I want it to feel like I know what it feels like when I'm writing something I'm like oh this is this feels like the thing I want for me um and it's all in pieces you know so I'll write like a verse in January and then won't be able to get the chorus until December that year so they're like it's very broken up and it's almost like piecing together like all these Thing. so it becomes like especially on this bunch of songs it's like very um and it makes like this strange feeling with the lyrics because you're sort of writing with so much life in between it which is not typical not for me anyway my usual experience of like writing with a band from you know a young age but it's i don't know it's just it's it's definitely a bit more chaotic and it's very insular and it's spread out which is yeah odd for songwriting it would seem to me that on your side of things like we hear it as the finished piece we didn't we don't hear all yes, the space yeah. in between but at the same time it's almost surprising that it doesn't feel disjointed and i don't even know if you feel like it's disjointed like again you 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 know like this was here and this was months later <laughs> yeah. here like is is that part like do you hear it like that it doesn't feel disjointed to me because i think the um I like I said, I know what I'm looking for. You know, I know what I want to. I know how it makes me feel like in my 
chest and my stomach and my, you know, my whole, I know what I want to get across. So it doesn't feel disjointed, but it certainly feels very, it does in the process a little bit where you're like, fuck, like what if does this verse go with this? So like it is, it does become a little bit stressful, particularly for people around me, like Sammy that did it and, and, <laughs> and Sierra, my wife, where it's like, I'm like, what about this thing with this? And it's all very, uh, yeah, but it ends up not being very disjointed in the end. You know, it, yeah. it becomes a finished product and that's a testament to, to Sammy, the producer. Right, which uh, you worked with. So, what is it about Sammy? Like, because uh, you work with Sammy again this time around. Like, yep. is that just like the friendship relation? I mean, is there anything specifically special? Um, I mean, he's. I like Sam because he's great. He will allow that process to happen and get me to that. Get me to the end product in the most. Um, what's the word? Like very. He'll sort of coach me there, like sort of baby me to get there <laughs> in a good way. Um, and he's also like, you know, a best friend. And we met and made those songs not knowing, you know, I didn't I didn't really know. I haven't had that like one-on-one -on -one with a producer writer just on my own before. So once you once I found that, I sort of just held on to it. And I have written with other people, like with other, other producers and stuff. And, you know, maybe in the future it'll happen. But just like I said, it's very um at least to me i know to you know other people listen to it probably sounds like other you know another song coming out but for me it's a very specific feeling and i've tried to replicate that with other people and it's hard and sam's is down for the process you know he'll wait he'll be like it's not gonna you know if it doesn't come today we'll get it another day you know it'll be fine and i think he he just gets it he yeah. gets it really you know on a sonic level and on a personal level and like emotionally he just understands it um which obviously is amazing. Yeah, I think, you know, as just a music fan and and, and sort of, you know, knowing deep catalogs and, and rock history and pop history and all that stuff, I, I appreciate, I don't know, you know, old style purist in me, I guess is what I'm getting. I appreciate when I see one producer name, mm. you know, that thing, because it's so often these days, especially yeah. when you start getting way more into the pop world, but not just that, you know, it's, 30 songwriters a song, 10 producers a track, you know, just whatever. <laughs> and and again, sometimes that's great. And sometimes you yeah. get amazing stuff out of that. But I love knowing like this is this is one meeting of the minds. Together. Yeah. So I think it's it beautiful. Is, it is cool. And I think that's probably what, you know, it's it, it's a romantic relationship in that way. Like to romanticize to be like, you know, let's just have a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, with the band, it's very, you know, the, it, there is a lot of people on the on the songs you know especially with the band and then other people and then like a few producers which is rad and i also like you just said the same way you like listening to songs with a bunch of producers as well i actually like working that way too you know i like doing it that way which is why i love stepping into the role of the band you know mm -hmm. um but it is it is nice to have that one-on-one -on -one, you know it's like that that sort of i don't know you get to have that very personal relationship it's cool yeah it's like one complete vision i guess that's you yeah. know that's what that's what i like about it. well let's see, let's hear about this you know so we got this single shakes and i love i love that it's not a contradiction but it's almost like you are going the vocals and the music are like two different speeds <laughs> like you got this music yeah. that just moves and moves and moves while your vocals are kind of drifting over it do you mm -hmm. find do you find that you it, like do you find that anything drives your melody, anything that you're attracted to when you're coming up with top line vocal? Um, well, for this one, I've been really trying to, I think because especially the fir my first album and just my, the way I write in general, I'm very, uh, I can like give too many details, I think. And I was really trying on this process to like have simple, simple choruses, like how how can we make, how can we get across the same emotion, if not more, with less words, I think. And that was a really big challenge. But vocally, I think this one, I was very, and I was trying a lot, especially on Shakes, and there's a few other songs that do it as well on the, you know, the project, where I wanted to, I was pitching around my vocal, and I was getting somehow more emotion out of it. So that stack of vocals in the chorus is, you know, obviously I'm on top of it unprocessed too, or not pitched. And then behind that, there's a pitch vocal 
and I was really I don't know what it is it gave like this weird not human element that I really loved um but melodically I think it's just whatever feels right it just like it, I want it to be dreamy I want it to be like not too I don't know not too uh I don't know the word is in the pocket or something I don't know what that what the word is not too like rigid mm -hmm. I like the flowing melodies that are like I don't know almost feel like a nursery rhyme um yeah yeah when I look back on that record from a few years ago the solo record you talked about like um what is it the uh enforced stillness and a place of yeah. reflection on the past 10 years of your life now we move forward do you find similarly that anything is sort of directing this latest set yeah I think a big theme was getting to my late 20s and I think anyone that has been there is you know stuff sort of starts to get a bit real I suppose for you know lack of a better word um and I remember it's funny because thinking back because I've been thinking about like you know how how the feeling has changed from that first album and the first album was very like I said at home trying to figure out whatever the last 10 years were in this, within me and it's all very from my perspective you know and like trying to understand the world but from a very like isolated melancholy like kind of depressing place because the whole world's you know fucked <laughs> and yeah, it's like a really weird place to be like everyone can relate to that and resonate with that and the next one I was writing like very on planes and hotel rooms like you know you next to the bed it's like the little uh the little thing in the hotel room with the shitty pencil that you can use and I think that's where all the piecing together came from and it was funny because looking back it has this same loneliness to it but in such a different way like when I'm we were touring so much with the band and I spent a lot of time on vocal rest where like you don't speak throughout the day so it becomes like really like lonely and like you kind of just i'm just we'll put my headphones in and walk around the cities like you're in a new city every day and i think i was finding that same feeling but surrounded by like the most like lots of people playing on stage and like being in a hotel room but like looking out the window and then like walking through obviously through city streets and stuff like that so it was funny that it was the same feeling but in such a different environment um yeah so maybe that's that's definitely a theme of like that I don't know, all constantly on the move, but feeling lonely and wanted to go home. So it's, mm -hmm. it's funny how that had happened. Yeah. And I mean, that's been said for years, decades. Um, how funny that is that, you know, here you are each night in front of tens of thousands of people. And it's one of the loneliest things you can do <laughs> is touring in a successful band or something like that. But it also makes a lot more sense how I was describing Shakes a minute ago with that movement on one side and this floating on the yeah. other because because when you're walking through a city silently, you know, with the earbud, yeah. like that's that's exactly the feeling I get too. Oh, you know? good. That's what we're going for. You know, I was really trying to get that, I don't know, that melancholy feeling. Everyone's, I mean, anyone that's sort of like felt that, you try to convey that, you know, in, in a song is difficult. Like a lot of artists, a lot of my favorite artists do that, you know, like a... I don't know anything by Damon Albarn or I was maybe. just thinking of Everyday Robots by Damon Albarn when yeah. I said that. Oh, right. Yeah. Like him and, you know, there's plenty of other people like Beach House, like that sort of, it depends on what mood you're in, like what the, how the emotion is dictated in the song, which I think is a really cool, like I was watching a lot of movies like Lost in Translation and Paris, Texas, and like all these movies where it's like, these are kind of depressing, but then if you're in a good mood, it's kind of like, oh, this is, this is beautiful. This is just real life. So I was really trying to, you know, it's very artsy fartsy, but that's what I was trying to get across. Nailed it. Seriously. As you're saying it more and more, <laughs> I hear it and I see it. And I'm like, yep, that's it. That's, that's Hell the yeah. feeling I had. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Oh <Hell> yeah. <laughs> it's also, you know, just playing with words, whatever set comes out next is technically your sophomore set, <laughs> which yeah. you've been through before. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't, I don't know if you think of it in those terms or whatever, but like comparing whatever version of sophomoreness and and you know for the things that can mean versus yeah. you know what it meant in the past when you did it the first time yeah i hadn't honestly i hadn't really thought about it in that way because i think it's um well great now now maybe maybe i will think of it like that <laughs> <laughs> but i mean you know sophomore album is notoriously a you know 
not fun ride usually or a more difficult process i should say um but this i don't know i just felt like i feel like i understand the first album i was trying to figure out what the sound was and what is it why am i doing this and i feel like i know what that is now so it's a different it feels a bit different to me like i sort of know what it is and why it is like what's the point of even doing this and i have something to say you know if i feel on my own i have something to say and that first album i knew i had something to say but i wasn't it took me a long time to get there mm-hmm. you know a long time of like you know why am i doing this like and covid sort of like exacerbated those feelings obviously um i don't know i don't really i don't have the the sophomore jitters i suppose <laughs> that's it does sound quite the opposite too uh, i mean i've said this a lot of times before on this series like i say that my favorite albums are sophomore albums because you know and i mean that literally and metaphorically too you know because what that can mean is a lot of times like you know as they say you got your whole life to write that first record and and you put all your good stuff in there and suddenly it's time to do another one if if you're lucky enough and you know for a lot of people it's the barrel's empty yeah it's like so what happens when you've got nothing what happens when you've really got to you know show yourself whether or not it's successful i think i always appreciate those records a little bit more yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. I think um, for me, it just got a bit more streamlined on mm-hmm. these. You know, what did what did I like about the first thing I did and like what what didn't I like? And I think I just, the hope in, you know, making more and more things is that you get closer to what the, the reason you're doing it and the sound of it sort of just comes a bit more, becomes like more of a well-oiled machine of like, this is what it is. And the first album was like, this is what it is. And this is what it is. And maybe it's like this, which I love, but this one has like a a feeling and a sound, you know, this next, next bunch of songs is very, for me, more streamlined and like, this is what it is. Yeah. Were you doing this? When, like when were you, because again, you've been very busy in the past year, but like, were you writing these, recording these on and off between tour? Yes. Yeah. So I'd, we'd have like a few months on the road and then I would go to, Shakes was written in New York. So I was listening to a lot of, um, like the LCD sound system and like even 90s stuff of like Cocktail Twins and The Verve and stuff like that. And not all those are from New York, obviously, but for me, that just makes me think of like, and also after knowing what I was sort of trying to get into, which is like that, that melancholy, like lonely, but surrounded by people. And that's like the most New York thing ever, <laughs> you know? And I really wanted to go right there because I'd never written there before. So this was written there um, and I was doing it in in breaks of tours and like, you know, we had a couple months off at the start of the, the whatever year it was, what year you're in, 2024. So it started like 2022 after like a big US run, I think, but I'm sort of always writing. So, and then like other bits were written like on, on a plane to fucking somewhere, you know, on a, like I remember writing stuff on a plane, like in notes and like people... When you're when you're doing stuff on planes, people are like, and you're like singing a little bit, and you're writing stuff down. They're like, "What is that guy doing?" <laughs> this is this you're like, the crazy guy on the plane. It doesn't exactly. even matter if it sounds good. Yeah, and it's very like a lot of the. So that's what I mean. Like bits are they're in bits and pieces, you know. So, but it was in gaps of two. I think it started in like late 2022, yeah, or something something like that. That's interesting. It was in New York when I first heard Shakes too. When your your team sent it over to me. It's, oh, there you go. It's just everything lining. You, you've you lined this up so perfectly for me. <laughs> that's, what, that's why we do it, yeah. Just line it up for you. It's always about the fans with you guys. I get it. <laughs> I, by the way, I, I, I watched the documentary that came out uh, just recently. I watched that last night before. I so, I, I so enjoyed that. It's really fun. Oh, Watching you guys put the skits together and the characters yeah. and how you produce the stage show and the dice. I like people arguing about the dice, your fans yep. online, especially dice, because you broke your rule right away. That was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the dice is maybe one of the best things we've ever come up with as a band. It's, it's just bloody, it's such a good idea. I mean, I'll stand by that. That's going to be like our thing, like the, well, maybe not quite as iconic as that, but like the, we wanted our like uh, Hell's Bells ACDC mm-hmm. thing where they come out and do that. Or like the, for those about to rock cannons, like we were trying to get that and we're not quite there yet, but you know, with this dice, maybe we'll get a bit more budget, you know, we get some bigger dice, maybe more of them, maybe they explode. I don't know. 
<laughs> I like where your head's at on this one. But I did a laugh at that because you explain the rules, you say, and whatever it lands on, we'll play. And then we see it come back to the stage and you're like, nope. <laughs> you really well, <laughs> well, some of those songs on there where we're like, we're like, oh, fans are going to love this one. They've been asking for years. And then we play it and then you see it in their faces and they're like, oh, this is why they don't play it. <laughs> you're like, oh, it's just funny. You can sell you can tell they're like, oh, maybe I, maybe I didn't like this as much as I thought I did, yeah. which is a funny feeling on stage. I have wondered that, like, because because I've got favorite bands, and when you've got favorite bands and you know all the songs or whatever, you know, it's like, of course, you'll get into the B-sides or the deep tracks or the soundtracks. It's like, man, why don't they ever play that? Why don't they ever play that? And I've often wondered what that was like from the artist's point of view, because you see something that we never see, and that's you see a collective face from the stage <laughs> yeah yeah and like that's got to be i don't know if that's surreal or just something that comes natural or something you get used to but that's uh it's definitely something that no one else has a you know sort of perception on i guess it's a funny feeling because I'm, I'm such a i mean from your conversations with me you can probably tell i'm a bit definitely more of like an introvert person and it's funny because like you know playing in front of a like a lot of people is a lot easier because you're right it becomes like a collective face until you like start moving as one with the audience you know um but anything like small is like way scarier honestly like small even like personally like a personal gathering that's small mm -hmm. is way more difficult but uh it is funny it's funny when you can it's you go to different places different countries different cities and people like different things and it's like they'll love this song in america anywhere and then you go to you know amsterdam and they don't like it or they don't like it as much and you have to like keep a record of that in your brain and be like what do you think these people are gonna like and then especially with the dice some of those were like some of them were like so good and some of them were like not good depending on the night so it was very uh i don't know it made the show more exciting yeah for sure something for the bootlegs you know it's uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> What's happening? So, uh, what does the rest of the year look like? I mean, uh, uh, you concentrate on yourself, or are you still working with the guy? Like, how does that? What, what's the work life balance here? Yeah, we we just had uh, that when that fifth album came out, we did two world tours back to back, and after that, everyone was sort of like, maybe let's let's take a Goodbye. take a couple months off, and you know, everyone has their things. Like Michael had a baby, mm. Ashton does. Solo stuff. Callum does whatever Callum does. <laughs> he'll be doing he'll be doing something creative or even just spending time with family, you know. Um, so we we all sort of were like, let's just take like a little a little second if you want to do some solo stuff, then just let us know when. So there's like conversations that go into it and the band will make music at some point this year. I don't know if it'll come out this year, but we will definitely make music like towards the end of the year, I'd say. Um but yeah, it's just like a a conversation you know yeah well i love what you guys do i especially love hearing this and especially like i said you you're, you seriously did hit just hit on all the moods that i love <laughs> hell yeah thanks man i appreciate that yeah man uh yeah congrats on this and it's always great talking to you thanks so much for taking the time thank you very much we'll chat when the uh when the tunes come out the rest of the tunes let's do it let's do round two round three i guess <laughs> yeah round three round hell three. yeah and thanks to my guest also thanks to you for, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.